This is a shortened truth table, and in this question, I need to demonstrate that the set of sentences is consistent. Consistency is important. You need to know what this property means, and it means that all sentences can be true at the same time. So what I'm looking for is a TVA uh, that makes every sentence here, sentence one, two, and three, true. The first place to start is always to identify the main connective. So let's take a look at the first premise. The main connective here is the biconditional. Then the second premise, I take a look. The main connective is the conditional, and that's because the arrows dominate over everything. And the final sentence here, the main connective is the negation, because this, uh, these are all sort of in the scope of brackets, so it's got to be the negation that ties them all together. Now the next thing to do is to make these things all the truth value you want. So I'll set that to true, and then uh, this is true, and then that is true as well. Okay, so those are all true, and now I'm able to actually start. Well, keep in mind what the final solution is. It's P, Q, R, S, W, and I will just need to put in my truth values here, and that's the actual solution. It's just a TVA which demonstrates the property in question. So where do I start? The problem with the first sentence is that a biconditional true has too many cases. It could be both sides are true, both sides are false, not enough information. The second premise, the conditional true, that's actually three cases. It could be TT, FT, or FF, and I don't know uh, what it is. So instead, I look at uh, here, and this is a unique case, because of course, when a negation is true, that means what it's modifying is false. So I just have to ask what the main connective is of the inside, and that's the disjunction, because the, con the conditional is being blocked off by the um, brackets there. So I know this disjunction must be false, because that's the only way that the negation could be true. And of course, this is really nice because a disjunction is false in a unique case. That's when both sides are false. So notice the left side of the disjunction is the S, and the right side of the disjunction is the Q arrow W, but the Q arrow W is represented by its main connective. That's why I put the F above the conditional. Now finally, I, I could write in the F here for the S, but I just immediately see that when a conditional is false, that's really great because that's a unique case as well. So Q is true and W is false. So now I'm ready to fill this in. S is false, Q is true, and W is also false. After I have this, I should really just fill everything out as I go along. So in the first premise, do I have any S, Ws, or Q? Well, I have a Q, so that means Q is, uh, oops, I wrote in false, but Q is in fact true. And that means the negation here is, of course, false. Now, that doesn't tell us any more information, so I move on. Over here, don't know the R. I know the S as well as the W are false. And this is really nice, because if I have a disjunction where both sides are false, that means the disjunction itself is also false. Uh, what else do I know? Well, I just need to be careful and evaluate upwards. So in a full truth table, I filter down. Uh, in a shortened truth table, I go up. So I want this negation, which is the next week connective, and not the, this conjunction. The negation modifies the S or W, which means the negation modifies the F, and uh, that means that this negation is in fact true. At this point we run into a bit of trouble, and the trouble is I don't know anything else. So I know that this left side of this conjunction is true, but I don't know what the right side is, and so I don't know what the conjunction is, because it turns out if this negation P is true, then the conjunction is true, but if the negation P is false, then it's false. Same thing goes over here. I actually don't know what's on the left, sorry, on the right of this disjunction. This disjunction, the left side is false, but the right side I don't know, and so depending on the value of R, that will dictate the value of this. So sometimes in some of the more difficult uh, truth tables, shortened truth tables, we have the scenario where we're not sure and we actually just need to guess. Now, uh, what if you guess wrong? It's not that big of a deal. So I'm actually going to sort of spoil it a bit and I'm going to guess wrong here just so I can show you that it really doesn't matter. So here I just need to sort of have a guess about R and P. Those are my uh, last remaining um, sentences here. And so let's say I guess that R is true, okay? So I used a different color here to, to illustrate that I'm actually guessing. So I'm gonna guess that R is true. Now what that means is if I want 
this premise here to be uh, true, which is the conditional, and I know the antecedent, the R, is true, that means the consequent must also be true, because I need to avoid that true-false combination. So that means that this disjunction must be true, which means that this negation must be true, and P must be false. So that was pretty straightforward. But what about this other side? Well, that means this is false over here. Um, but because the biconditional must be true, that means that the right side also has to be false, which means that R must be false. But I have a problem. Oh, there it is. I can't have R be both false and true. So I guessed wrong, and I immediately came to a problem. So I'm just going to undo all that, and then we will guess the opposite of what we guessed. So instead of guessing R true, I'll actually guess R is false. Now the reason why this is actually a really nice guess is because R being false trivially makes this second premise true. Why? If you have a false antecedent, it doesn't matter what the value of the consequent is. The, the entire conditional is true. So this solves this premise nicely. But what about over here? Well, if R is false, that means I have a false left disjunct, a false right disjunct, which means the disjunction itself is false. Now, P must be the same because the biconditional is true, which means that P is false as well. Now, I double check over here. Does this screw anything up? No, it doesn't, because P being false means this is true, and that means this is true, but it doesn't matter because it's in virtue of the false antecedent that the entire premise is true regardless. So this is my final answer here, and uh, that's a tricky short and truth table because it requires a bit of a guess, but still, you just really want to commit to a guess, see how it runs through, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you go back and guess the opposite. And that's how you do shortened truth tables with a sort of a tricky sort of guess component.